tell you about before we actually get started on the exact program. Just wanted to say hi to everybody and thank you for coming today. And most of you that are here are uh, may have already signed up on the private Facebook group. And so you can see and you can share and you can post uh, any ideas that you might have on the Wave Watch. And uh, all of those programs are recorded. So I think I'm getting close to 25 or maybe even 30 programs that have been recorded on the Wave Watch Frequency Fanatics group. And then don't forget the website. You can go there to uh, find any information out about the Wave Watch that you want. And of course, a disclaimer. I love this disclaimer because I have had several people look at it and uh, tell me that it's a good uh, disclaimer. And so hopefully we're all covered and uh, this makes sense to everyone. This is a self-care tool. It is not a um, intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent. That's even a, a word we, we can't really say sometimes. Uh, Weight Watch is not a licensed medical product and all acoustical frequencies are still considered experimental. The Wave Watch is not FDA approved or considered a medical device. And anytime you give me a testimony, it's strictly volunteer and no one's been reimbursed. Now you will see some names that relate to a um, medical terminology, sometimes you might see, but we have used those names only so that we can relate to the sound frequencies that were made for those particular ideas. So anyway, that, that's the Wave Watch and most of you on today have a Wave Watch. So I think we're ready to go with some information about chakras. Everybody seeing okay? I'm sure you'd let me know by now. So chakras have been I'm around sorry. for thousands the years yes everything okay are you, on, are you on facebook too yes wave watch frequency fanatics it's streaming okay. live right now so chakras are um something that you might have heard about they're thousands of years old um uh, it's mostly based on seven major chakras but there are lots and lots of chakras that we may not hear as much about but these main seven chakras are considered energies, uh, centers of energy, and they're always in motion. Uh, they govern a distinct uh, set of physical, emotional, and spiritual issues. And again, like I mentioned, there are several other um, uh, chakras that uh, we can talk about, uh, you know, on another time. But we're just talking about the main seven, and then I've got the uh, Earth's uh, chakra and the soul star chakra today also to talk about just a little bit, but uh, huge topic. There's no way that I can cover it. I'm not an expert at it. I use it. I know about it. But if you're really interested in chakras, go to a couple classes, uh, learn about it more on the internet, do some of your own research. It's very, very deep and a huge system for learning about your physical, emotional, and spiritual issues again. So uh, previous to, uh, you know, just some information, I've already mentioned that the, uh, uh, these are centers and they, they spin, they're kind of like wheels, energy centers, and they actually do uh, correspond to certain nerve bundles and major organs. And uh, the chakra system, was uh, in Vedic tests, uh, text uh, in ancient India between 1500 and 500. So they are, it's a very old system. Now we didn't really know about uh, chakras in the West until the 1920s. And some of that information that come out that came out a couple of books was a little bit negative. It made it, it made uh, chakras sound very negative and I'm not gonna say any other words. But um, in 1977, uh, Christopher Hills popularized, popularized chakra systems and actually gave us some information that connected them scientifically to our hormones and to DNA. And actually, he was the first person that connected the light frequencies and the color of the rainbow to the chakra colors. So I don't know if most of you are you know, familiar with these and I just found a little uh, drawing right here that I could use or a photo uh, of those uh, images. 
Uh, but that wasn't part of the ancient uh, system that we know, or you know, that is talked about and used uh, in India. It's much more complex. And, you know, Westerners, that's us. <laughs> but we always tend to change something and make something else out of it. And so what we're seeing today is definitely just a, a little bit different version of what you would learn from somebody who is from India or who has studied it or that is their um, area of expertise. This is going to be uh, very light because there are some things that we can do to harness this energy without having to be masters of the chakras. Well, it goes a lot faster when your screen changes. <laughs> so you can balance your own chakras. And this is where we have learned and, and the information that we've seen for ages and ages is different yoga postures, breathing practices to encourage the flow of energy, you know, uh, meditation to bring about clarity of mind. So all of those have been used. Now, some of our age group, and that includes me, I'm not that interested in doing a lot of yoga posture. Sometimes I am, but sometimes I just don't get there, you know? So what we have are wave watch frequencies for chakras. It makes it so much easier. And on this presentation, I was actually able to show you the exact uh, Hertz for each of the chakras that we're gonna be talking about today because there's just one frequency. And you can even see this on the internet. You could you know, type in frequency for third eye and you could hear some music. You could see that on YouTube or wherever you find it. And uh, you know, it's just one frequency where the frequency sets for other things on the Wave Watch may have 30 frequencies combined to give the effect. So this made it so much easier for me to show you the exact frequency. Now, by the same token, because there's only one frequency in there, when you play these frequencies on the wave watch, they're not gonna sound very like very much. You're gonna have to really strain to hear them and you know, put them way up to your ear uh, is the response that I have from most people. So uh, these are the chakras that I do have on the wave watch. And I did find an illustration to show you exactly. So the chakra at the bottom, the earth star, is uh, obviously about uh, eight to 10 inches uh, below us. Then the root chakra, the sacral, the solar plexus, the heart, the throat, third eye, the crown, and then the star soul. So those exactly mirror what we're doing here. Now, I do have to say, that um, I didn't do a very good job on the chakras, putting them on the uh, wave watch. They somehow they got alphabetized <laughs> rather than this order that they should be in. So when you learn a little bit about chakras, you'll find that you should start by, you know, tuning the bottom one first. You tune your root chakra, the deep ones, the earth star, and you're going to work with those first to move up through your body. And so what I have on the wave watch is, again, an alphabetized list. And somehow that slipped through when I was putting 850 frequencies on there. So one thing that you can do, because this works a lot better for you to just keep gathering steam, you know, as you balance each chakra starting from the bottom, is to make a uh, playlist. So I've got just a little video for you. Some of you know how to make a playlist and then some of you still have some questions. So I've got just a little video and it shows how to make a playlist two and three. So I'll see if I can get this started and we'll just watch this. It's a short one. Now let's say that we have somebody who we want to make a second playlist for, maybe a husband and wife, or maybe you're uh, sharing this uh, watch with somebody who's in assisted living like my mom and can't do it herself. So we might want a playlist made and all ready to go. So basically what we're going to do is a little bit different. We're going to find 
the particular idea that we want. And I'll show you this again with maybe just a little bit different idea. So if we wanted to go to uh, chronic, we could go down to chronic fatigue and we could touch that one. Now this is a little bit different right here. Instead of putting it in the heart folder, you have to touch the menu bar. And then you very carefully go down. This one just goes one at a time and you'll see add to playlist. So you'll touch add to playlist and then you'll see your three playlists there. So we're going to add this to playlist number two. And when I touch that, it opens up and it says chronic fatigue. Yes or no. So you're going to touch yes. And it's now gives you a signal. It's added to playlist number two. Now, if I want to remove this, I have to touch, go down one arrow and it will give me a choice of which playlist. And then it will say remove from playlist. Yes. So that's a pretty easy one there. Now, if you want to add it to playlist three, not too hard now. You're going to add that to playlist number three. If you want to take it out, you're going to remove from the playlist right in those particular areas. So playlist two and three go through the home screen and you arrow down to add to playlist or remove from playlist. Hope that helps you. Now let's say that we have somebody who we want to make. Okay. Now let's say that we have somebody who we want. <laughs> uh, that, that, that was a jumpy one there. Sorry about that. So uh, just kind of give you a little preview there. I, if you're going to use the um, chakras a lot, it would probably be worth your time to just go through and line them up correctly rather than alphabetically like they are on the Wave Watch. And so that would just make the whole uh, chakra idea building and building and building uh, and your energy increasing, increasing, increasing if you do it in the right order. So I've done that uh, on one of my um, watches, but I have four or five of them that I exchange all the time because I'm testing them and trying to see what's going on. So I haven't done it on all of them. But again, the uh, information, the little video, hopefully that was easy to see. So uh, the first one to start with is the Earth Star. And it's the grounding point. So that's an easy one to remember. It's the first one. It's your grounding. You've got to get your grounding going before, you know, anything. And lots of different ways to say that. It looks like it's, uh, you know, related to a uh, relationship to the planet, and the, the universe. Um, and of course, everything that we do today kind of tends to get us ungrounded. So we're talking about, um, you know, our life and our hectic pace and computer and, you know, our life. That, that's where I should stop. Our life. We get ungrounded. So that's a good one to start with. And uh, we lose balance a lot. Sometimes people are going to have vertigo. You might have some eating disorders. You might have physical problems in your legs and circulation problems. So again, this is a self-care tool. But a lot of times, if you're just not feeling quite right, you know, there's going to be a reason and an easy way just to play the chakras for emotional, spiritual, and physical energy. It covers a lot in just a few short minutes. Or you can do exercises, you can do meditation, you can do the yoga, and you can do the breathing. So all of those are amazing. But really, all of these chakras come down to an energy. So when you're sitting there, doing a breathing pattern, you're trying to get that energy going. When you're meditating, you're trying to get that energy. And so really we've hopped right to it by providing the exact frequency for these chakras. So that's a little bit about the earth star and it could just go on and on and on and take up you know, quite a bit of time. So uh, just giving you a brief overview because I'm not a specialist in this, but I think we can get uh, a lot of ideas just from simplicity sometimes. So um, these are signs of a blocked root chakra or an unbalanced one. And again, I didn't know until I was reading just a little bit deeper that the symbols and the color were just added. They haven't been traditionally thousands of years uh, tied in with the chakras. It was just something that came about from Westerners <laughs> uh, looking at 
the um, chakra ideas. So in this one, you can see uh, all of these feelings of depression, unable to take action, being disconnected, isolated, panic attacks, digestive disorders. And you can read this as good as I can. So all the slides in the next series that has some of the issues came from the um, Seven Chakras uh, Introduction to Energy Centers and a, a really great um, Indian uh, site right there that is very uh, specific and would be a much deeper dive if you would like to look at that type of information. So again, the colors were added and they were attached to stones also through our Western uh, interpretation. So the sacral chakra, you know, going up one step, make, you know, the area that we're thinking about right there, it makes perfect sense. You're gonna have some chronic lower back pain, some arthritis, possibly sexual problems, hip issues, anemia, joint problems, low energy, spleen and kidney issues, and maybe some premenstrual problems if your sacral chakra is blocked. Now, I didn't go into it today, but we have these for all, uh, we have a list of completely different ideas for the chakras on emotions. So, and then spiritual. So you can go anywhere you want with these, but mostly what I put on here was the physical problems that can radiate from that. So I know the other day, I think my back was a little bit sore and I ran this uh, sacral one and it really worked. I was really uh, thrilled to see that uh, issue go away very quickly. And I've had lots of other people, uh, you know, want to be using the Wave Watch for, for pain. That's, that's a big part of it. We want to be pain-free. Uh, we don't necessarily want to take medication. And so that's why I'm kind of emphasizing some of the pain or the uh, ideas a little bit more than the emotional. Uh, didn't have time to cover it all in one uh, idea. So the next one, uh, the solar plexus. So here we, we are back up into our stomach area and our uh, digestive area. So of course, we're gonna have digestive issues, uh, eating disorders, ulcers, diabetes, uh, colon irritation, constipation, uh, nutrient problems, irritable bowel syndrome, the list is kind of endless. So when you think of solar plexus, you know, sometimes people ask me what to do for diabetes and I don't think to tell them the solar plexus. You know, I just can't think of everything. I need to get that more in my frame of mind. So that might be something that you pass on to people. Hey, try the chakras and especially the slow solar plexus for diabetes, uh, you know, or any of the other ideas that we're talking about. So it can be huge. Again, we're just talking about the physical connection today. The heart chakra, just what it says it is. Now this one has a little bit of relationships, but we get into fear of rejection. We're talking about our heart, uh, loss of trust with you know, relationships, uh, dependency, again, relationships. Uh, but we also can get heart palpitations, poor blood circulation, heart pain, angina, and even asthma problems. So when we're talking about the heart, you just have to think of the labeling that they put on it. The heart chakra affects many, many emotions. It's going to affect many uh, spiritual ideas also. And of course, these ideas with your heart. So the color that was assigned to it in the 19th, you know, almost the 20th century was in 1977 is the 20th century, I guess. But uh, anyway, the Greek green and the element air was assigned to it. Isn't that funny? Again, I'm not really patting us on the back, Westerners, you know, we probably shouldn't have done that, but it gave us a little bit different view to uh, work with it and really kicked it off where it was accepted more and more and uh, into our society. So the throat chakra, we have a few emotions here, but when you're thinking of throat, anything that, that you're thinking of here, a sore throat, 
uh, fluctuations in hormone levels because of your thyroid, uh, pain or stiffness in the neck area. And I'm not sure why I didn't get, I didn't get thyroid on there because that's kind of an obvious one too. So if you're having some thyroid problems, that should be on there. So, uh, you know, you can't describe your emotions. You, you have a, a feeling of being misunderstood by people. And sometimes you're gonna get aggressive uh, and use negative words and actions if your throat chakra is messed up. So that's a good one to work with. And that's why I'm saying that maybe we ought to go ahead and do the playlist, make our own playlist and whichever one you can put it in or however you wanna put it in a playlist and go ahead and get it in the right order. Some of you have just joined a little bit later and I was saying that I owe you an apology because I did put the chakras on here, but somehow they got in alphabetical order and I should have listed them from the earth uh, chakra up to the uh, star soul chakra, soul star chakra. And, um, so I had suggested that you make your own playlist and put them in the right order. Now you can pick one out of, um, you know, just like pick the throat chakra. You, you have a sore throat, you can pick the throat chakra. There's not a problem with that. But if you want to balance your whole system, you would start working at the bottom and balance them all the way up. So that works a little bit better if you want to go ahead and put those in a specific playlist. So that's for those of you who uh, had just entered. Maybe you're caught up now just a little bit as we talk about chakras. The third eye is a huge one also. Um, it's going to connect more with everything that's on the screen. It makes perfect sense. And this system makes so much sense if we just work with it. You know, sometimes people are uncomfortable with this system. And I think that's because of the, some of the really negative uh, energy that was put out about it uh, in the late, uh, you know, 20s and 30s when it, uh, it was first started, there was definitely some negative information. And it's taken us decades to really appreciate and see that the chakra systems have to do with our endocrine system. They, they can see the DNA connection. And they know the exact measurement, the frequency for each one of these chakras and how it does relate down to every cell. So when we think third eye, you know, we should be thinking eye problems. We should be thinking headaches, migraines, insomnia, brain disorders, endocrine system. So we're talking about pituitary, uh, pineal, uh, and hypothalamus. So these are all huge um, areas. So if you're having any of those, if you want some a little bit more stimulation, just pick out the third eye chakra and play it. So maybe the migraine folder isn't working exactly uh, for you that I've created, but probably the migraine folder already has the exact frequency from the third eye chakra that I showed you earlier. And I might, uh, uh, well, we might move back to that in a little bit if we want to see those exact frequencies. But um, we have measured frequencies for over a hundred years. Um, and so we have so many frequencies and all of these frequencies from different cultures, they're all coming together. It's a world view. It's not each culture is different. It's that maybe we have different wording, we have different ways to think about it, but in the end, it always comes down to a vibration and a frequency. And every group of people have figured out the same frequency for different health problems. I think that's pretty fascinating. So the crown chakra, we're getting up to the top here. The crown chakra talks about uh, poor coordination, uh, tension headaches, exhaustion. And then I actually found a chart and had to put this one together a little bit, but there's underactive symptoms and there's overactive symptoms. So those are a little bit more on, uh, you know, feelings, emotions, spiritual, uh, but confusion about what you want to do 
lack of inspiration, desire to oversleep. Doesn't that sound pretty underactive? You know, that's, that's an easy one to think of. Overactive is cynicism, apathy, spiritual addiction, self-destructive tendencies, and maybe overwhelmed because there's so many things going on in your brain all the time. So uh, the crown chakra is a good one to play for any of those particular ideas. And again, if you would go to some of the specific frequencies that are in other places that sound like uh, uh, exhaustion or chronic headaches, again, we would find the at least one of those frequencies would be uh, the exact one from the crown chakra. And don't forget that when you play the chakras, they're very, very soft because there's only one frequency where in a frequency set for headaches, there might be 20 to 30 frequencies. So that's why they are quite a bit uh, more, um, or excuse me, that's why it's easier for you to hear them because they have more frequencies together. So the crown chakras or all of the chakras are just one frequency and your body will absorb that frequency. It doesn't have to be loud. You don't have to be blowing yourself away. So it works just the way it is. And then the soul star chakra uh, is another one that's added to the seven. So we actually have nine chakras on the wave watch. Um, and it, without it, they're saying that the other seven main chakras would be unbalanced. Just like if we didn't start at the earth chakra, which is the very, very uh, basis uh, for balance, um, that would leave us in a state of being really unbalanced if we didn't balance the top one that's above our head. So if our soul star chakra is out of balance, we're gonna have confusion, aloofness, uh, being spaced out, headaches and migraines again, we're always talking about the head, uh, maybe even para, uh, paranoia, uh, mental fatigue, depression, and the list goes on and on. Uh, so uh, it's very important that we balance everything uh, that we can on the chakras. Yes, it's okay to pick out one here and there, but I would suggest that, you know, hey, maybe once a week or a couple times a week, whatever you uh, are thinking, that you balance all of the chakras and see how that makes you feel just a little bit better. So uh, I don't know if any of you have seen this, but uh, again, these stones and the colors of the stones were added evidently by Western people interpreting uh, the chakras from uh, ancient India. So they're saying that each crystal has its own vibrational frequency, just like the chakras. So the stones that resonate at the same frequency of the chakras, people are tending to wear them and get some really good um, changes in their balance just with wearing uh, the, the correct stones. So um, don't forget that when you're using stones a lot, they tell you that you need to cleanse and rejuvenate the stones. You need to take them out in the sun and let them clean, cleanse for eight hours or so. Um, I know I just bought a pendulum and it had a, uh, a silver, I don't know where it's at, I could have just shown it to you. It had a, a stone on it, a crystal stone on the bottom, and then it had the chakra stones as you went up. They were much smaller, more of bead type stone, um, very rough cut, but still the seven colors of the chakras, uh, just like we're holding in, in the hand in this image here. So Cosmic Cuts, you know, gave us that information. And again, don't forget, we still, we have the easy way with the vibrations already in place on the wave watch, but I would suggest that you make a uh, playlist and put them in the correct order, starting from the bottom going up. And don't forget, we can still do yoga. We can do meditation. We can do um, breathing exercises. And all of those are to get our energy, to get us in line and rejuvenated through the correct energetic balance in our body. And we've kind of gotten away from that. You know, we are tending to uh, be a lot more, you know, medical related and take a pill and we want it to work just like this. Instead, we need to be slowing down and letting our body breathe and 
take in the goodness of everything that was given to us. Um, I've shown these pictures before, but I did want to uh, kind of show them again is an, in relationship to this because we're, we've been talking a lot about the chakras and you know the, the throat, the, um, uh, the soul star and excuse me, the crown. And this is the closest image that I have to show somebody who was having these things. She was having tension, headache and stress. And then I took three images of her 30 minutes apart. So the first one um, looks like these images have gotten out of order. I don't know how that happened, <laughs> but uh, wow. <laughs> the, um, the one that's in the center is the first one that I took. And uh, the second one is on the very right side after 30 minutes. And the third one is on the left side. Wow, how do images switch around on you? Did not realize that. But you can see that the uh, inflammation has changed in an hour period. Now she didn't do the chakras, but that that was the closest that I could give you a you know a visual of how our tension and stress should go away just playing the chakras. And I do have testimonies, you know, people who have you know been impressed that they thought something changed. But this was just a visual. Now let me see if my next one. Now this one's in line, so I don't know what happened here. But this is the side view of the same lady. So on the uh, left side, you'll see that she's got a lot of inflammation from that tension, headache, and stress, and PTSD is what she called it. And then 30 minutes later, uh, we did inflammation and trauma, and uh, those frequencies had changed the inflammation that we could see on the thermography imaging. And then the last picture that was taken at the end of an hour showed that that was all gone, and she had just really an excellent testimony about that turnaround. Now, when I looked up inflammation, it had one of the frequencies for the, um, um, I'm thinking it was the crown chakra, uh, was in it. And that's kind of what I've been telling you, that that's why two or three things could work. Don't hesitate to use all of them, but there are different frequencies that overlap. So our community, uh, starting with uh, I'm understanding now that it was Tesla that did a lot of measurements with frequencies for healing and then Rife used or was able to, you know, work with those same frequency ideas and develop them a lot more. Uh, Royal Raymond Rife, if you haven't heard about him, was excellent and he's uh, did so much measuring of frequencies. But again, what I was saying, that technique of frequencies picked up the same frequencies as the uh, Sanskrit and the Vedic um, chakras have been using for thousands of years. So again, every culture has developed a method, but they're all recognizing that our healing comes down to frequencies and certain frequencies react in certain ways on certain organs and certain systems. So anyway, I gave you a little bit of an introduction today on um, chakras and I hope that you will try them if you haven't already. Uh, I was really tickled. I was talking to a man the other day and uh, he said that he was uh, running the earth uh, chakra at that particular point, the earth star chakra. So I was really tickled to see that. Now I'm gonna see if I can go backwards real quick, see if I can figure out the rest way. And we'll see if we can find uh, the frequencies again that I listed for you. There we go. So for those of you who came in just a little bit late, these are the uh, frequencies that are uh, clued into the wave watch. And I was suggesting that you play them in the order from the earth star to the soul star. And so you might want to program them into your uh, playlist two or number three, or you know the first one, whatever, however you wanna do that. Uh, and these are just the specific frequencies. So. Just a little bit of a side uh, note here. Uh, I have a business and it's called 432 Energetics. And that's where I got the number from was the root chakra is 432 frequency, 432 Hertz. So lots of fun things that you can see and do. And hopefully you'll see that these uh, frequencies are useful to you and can be very calming and very emotional. And that's why they're in the emotions to start with. So I think I'm done and I hope uh, some information was good here. I just wanted to show that screen uh, again.
for just the individual frequencies that have been measured for the different chakras. So I'm gonna open this up and if anybody wants to add, because I am not an expert on chakras and we only went through some of the major physical problems that could be connected to the chakras. So uh, anybody would like to um, open up and make a comment? We're ready, I'm open. Anybody would like Thank to do that? Question mark. All right, sure. Where are the uh, frequencies listed in the book to know which hertz are associated with each chakra? You had a chart here. Is that yes, anyone? I don't have a, I don't have frequencies in the book. There's no way I can get the frequencies. So the chakras are in the emotions, and I just was able to, you know, like I mentioned, most okay. of those frequency sets have thirty frequencies in each set, and the chakras are the only ones that basically have one frequency. Some of the emotions have one frequency. So they're not listed necessarily. We're just using the name. So, yep. Anybody like to share anything from any, anything at all, doesn't have to be about chakras, but if you have any information that you wanted to share or just unmute yourself and hop in, give us some information. So, my name is Linda. Hi, Linda. Hi, Linda. <laughs> Hi, How Linda. are you? <laughs> yes, um, I just wanted to say um, there is a way in, uh, for those. I, I'm a holistic um, professional. Um, and one of the ways we can measure outside of just um, using the frequency is called muscle testing. So there is a way to determine like what chakra is out of, um, you know, is not spinning the right way, it's out of balance. And there's also a way to, you know, muscle testing is also used to say, it, to ask if the chakra is balanced. So some people can feel a physical shift and some people can't. So muscle testing is a way, it's an additional um, step that can be applied to see if the chakras are balanced. So Linda, do you have a favorite uh, muscle testing method? We've kind of showed some of them here before and you know, had a little bit of a conversation on them, but which, what is your favorite one? My favorite is the swaying. Um, yes. You can use your body. You don't have to have a pendulum or anything. Some people like a pendulum. It all depends on what is comfortable for the individual. But I use mm -hmm. my body um, most of the time on my a pendulum. Anybody have any other muscle testing? I mean, we've talked about, you know, the ring to ring method. We've talked about, you know, just moving your, uh, your thumb uh, and feeling the difference when you have a, a truth and a false uh, statement uh, in your mind. Uh, I don't know that we've done a lot with the stand and sway. That is the method that I teach in my office to my breast health clients because that's so physical. But is, does anybody else have any others? That, um, because Linda had such a good point. Muscle testing is great and very needed. So hopefully you're into muscle testing by now or the times that we've mentioned it. Hopefully you, you can take some time and look it up and learn more about it. Just like I hope and I hope this is an opening for you to learn more about chakras. Um, what I found was that I couldn't pronounce very many words very good. So I, <laughs> I was not very good with some of the Indian terminology or the wording. So, uh, you know, I need to take some uh, some lessons on uh, pronunciation. I'm sure I have to laugh at myself. Yeah, Virgil. Um, I like just sitting upright and setting my head correct and just letting a yes be a side to side and a, a, our yes is forward, backward and side to side and the head will just move ever so slightly. And it's very easy to discern yes and no without using all that other stuff. Just sitting still and just letting the head go one way or another and it'll say yes or no. See, this is why I love these conversations. Virgil, I just learned stuff. I, I, I thought I knew a lot of muscle testing ideas, but that one, I've never used that one. So yeah. 
Linda, I don't know if you've used that one since you, you know, work with muscle testing too, but that's a great one, Virgil. And I'm sure we can all do that. You know, everyone can have, feel it. it, it doesn't have, it's, it's not even about going side to side, just get still and just show a yes. And the, and the, and the body will go just a little bit of a nudge, nudge will go forward and backwards and to the side for me that no, yes, but it's very subtle. Just it's easy. It doesn't require a lot of training. I like it. And muscle testing is that way. You know, we just need to uh, open our eyes up and look at the wonder and the simplicity of some of these things that we can do to uh, learn about taking care of our body better. Thanks, Virgil. Great idea. Now, one thing, do not, if, if I have an attachment to the outcome, it doesn't work. So discrimination and, and detachment is really important. And that's the hardest thing to master in this whole process. And it is for any kind of muscle testing. That's always the worry of people is that they've gotten yeah. their mind wrapped around it and they're influencing it. So, all right. Other ideas, anything on chakras or any uh, testimonies on anything? Other questions, whatever. We're just winding down. We actually had more time than I thought. Linda? Yes. Linda, I had a question on the muscle testing. So uh, when you do that, do you just say like, uh, earth star chakra and then you muscle test it or how do you determine which chakra is weak or that you need to use when you do muscle testing yes you would have to put that word in your mind do i need the earth star chakra yes or no you know and get whichever method you're using you'll have to get a yes or no or do i need throat chakra yes or no there's so many ways you know so if you're doing the stand and sway, which you know I've taught through the Bra's thermography, you can say, "Do I need Earth Chakra, or you know whichever one you're you're asking about?" And your body will give you a forward sway if it's yes, and it'll go backwards if it's no. Okay, thanks. Yep, that's it. It's just a, a yes or no on any of them. So, Linda, yes, do you? have a way to post the site for the all symptoms slides that you suggested on at the bottom of the second or third slide is there a way to post that on your site so that you can just highlight that and then get those because it's difficult to write that out oh that i show you the order to put them in in the playlist no there's a website that you got all oh, the slide symptoms from. Oh, to yes, I could do that. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes, you. I certainly could, because that was a really good site. And I did want to thank them because most of the symptoms I just uh, copied and pasted from there. Tried okay. to give them credit. It was an Indian site. Very, very well done. And teaches classes and, you know, things like that, too. So. Anne, go ahead. Anne, were you going to make a comment? Uh, no, sorry. Oh. I don't know how I got, I don't know how I got unmuted. That was an accident. Sorry. Hey, not a problem. <laughs> Gosh, have I been unmuted and making noise? I'm sorry if I have been, I didn't know. I haven't noticed it. Uh, okay. Anybody else? We're actually having a little bit of free time. Maybe I should have went into more some of the emotional things with some of the uh, chakras. Didn't think I would have time though. But uh, anyway, uh, it is an easy, easy thing to get them uh, in the right lineup for your chakras in a playlist and then play those. Uh, you could play them at night. Uh, if you think you're having trouble with a particular one, you could loop it for several uh, loops or, you know, a couple hours or even all night long, if that's the possibility you would, you know, some people are, are getting uh, such good muscle testers. They're also saying, should I play the, uh, the star chakra eight minutes? You know, should I play it uh, three loops? Yes. You know, should I play it all night long? No. So that's one way to do it. Uh, you could do the head, you know, like 
if you're feeling comfortable, the one that uh, Virgil just mentioned, you could do the stand and sway. So you can also muscle test the length of time to play a set. Uh, you could even ask it, should I play the whole set of chakras or should I play one chakra? You know, that kind of thing. So you can find out so much information from your body. And, you know, we, we have talked about this a little bit and uh, maybe we should get together and have a lot of people or maybe I should put together a whole uh, effort on just muscle testing. Um, I don't know if I could somehow, I don't know if I could get a show of hands because not everybody's up on, on the screen, obviously, but um, do most of you know how to do some kind of muscle testing? Is there, you know, somebody that wants, to, is there anybody that maybe I should put it the opposite way? Is there anybody that wants to learn about muscle testing? Or are people pretty fluent in muscle testing? I'm willing to learn about muscle testing. Um, also, early on, I heard about the, the chakras okay so the chakras does that also help you with people that are have problem with the hearing yes there has been some so that would be the throat or the crown even so it's kind of an in-between one you know but or or possibly even the the crown one you know anything in the head that could be a possibility And again, you could muscle test with the, uh, is it you, Derwood? Can I be, I mean, you could say, you know, who's ever name, you know, you can say, does Derwood need, you know, help with the crown chakra and his ears? No. Would the uh, throat chakra be helpful for Dur Derwood and his ears? And see, I got a positive yes on that one. I don't know if you can see my muscle testing here. I got a yes on that. And I'm not saying that you, it's you or not. You know, I should have done myself for an example. Uh, I do happen to be uh, deaf and, and could have done that a, a different way, you know. So uh, another way is to put your fingers together. Do I need the uh, throat chakra for my ears? That's a no. Uh, do I need the crown chakra for my ears <laughs> that's definitely see it's a little bit different that was a no and I should have said the other one was a yes yeah the first one was a yes throat chakra was a yes and the crown chakra was a no because I can't even move my fingers when I say do I need the crown chakra for my ears that's a no you know okay I don't know if you can see that I'm just rubbing my fingers together and that the whole um feeling and uh, movement of your fingers changes when you have a truth or a falsehood, maybe it's a way to say it, something that's good or bad, different ways to say that. But when I was saying, do I need crown chakra for my ears? I could not even move my fingers. I'm, I'm not sure the angle so that you can see it. I got there, but I can't even Move see it closer, it. closer to the screen the camera there you go but that's still yeah so I can barely you know I can't my fingers won't even slide but when I say do I need the throat chakra for my ears it just slides and slides and there's no problem is that better to see it yeah do I need the crown chakra it just I mean all of a sudden my fingers are frozen I can't even move it so that's a really good method too I like that one a lot they're all useful at different times so other ideas, anybody have anything else to say or we're kind of winding down, don't want to bore everybody. And <laughs> Question. Did you have your hand up? Oh, Virgil, there you go. Um, how to load say crown chakra, which I wanted to play three times. How would I load that in the watch um, so that it would play that three th times and go to the root chakra play twice Whatever. How it, does, it won't, it won't do, do that. Okay. No, it won't do that. All right. So it's. We got. So it I, does a lot of things on there, but it doesn't do that. All right. <laughs> so. Okay. Cool. Linda. Yes. In all of the energy work I have studied over the last five years, we were trained never to ask the question. 
in a question form, you say, I need, or she, or he, or name, somebody's name, needs this, or pose it as, um, but it's never in a question form. It's intent. Well, um, that was a good input. I don't know. Um, I, uh, I guess I maybe I've been taught different than you, or you know, maybe I have some different information. So you know, there's uh, great things the way Carol is mentioning. You know, so again, I mean, I can get this by by doing a question. Um, but so when you you just make a statement by, can you say that again? You just make a statement. For instance, if I'm testing myself for a medication or a uh, nutritional supplementation, you hold it to the sternum and I need this. And you let, like, uh, was it Virgil said, you can let your body do the sway or the yay or nay with your head as you're concentrating on it. But you're making a statement, I need this. Right. Okay. I'm not saying do I. Okay. All right. So maybe there could be some clarification on that. So again, that's why I'm saying, I hope that we've given just enough information and maybe some of it wasn't as, uh, was a little bit different than somebody else's information. And so you want to read and get the best that, that works for you, you know, uh, different I methods. Got, I, yes. I need, to, I need to add something to that. There's a difference in my experience between needing something and the body being able to use it. I might need the supplement, but it could be toxic to my liver because my body can't use it. So wording and thought and intention is really important. Um, that's, I agree. Yeah. Do I need, do I need it? And can, I, and can this body use it at this time? You're asking a question again. It works for me. I've been doing it for 50 years. And uh, wait, everyone has their own way. I've been doing questions for 20 years, probably. So I don't know. Yeah, yeah, uh, so yeah. again, that's why I'm saying there's some really good methods out there. And the one you learn that works for you, you know, hopefully, because your body is, uh, to me, listening to itself and uh, feeling your intentions. So other ways. Anything else that we need to add? Does anybody do any yoga exercises and do the, uh, you know, uh, work with the uh, chakras intentionally through their, their yoga? Is that why they're doing yoga? Or are you doing it just for the exercise version? seems to me like some of the yoga studios you can go to are just uh, exercises now. Don't say a lot, you know, about the uh, behind the scenes uh, processing of chakras or improving the chakras. Seems like we've moved on and, and passed some of the energetic uh, ideas that the yoga can provide for us. But again, everything changes over time, it seems like. All right. Well, I don't want to bore anybody. Uh, I have really appreciated your time here today and thank you for getting on. Uh, one last announcement. I'm going to be gone next week, so there will not be a program. And um, I'm not sure if your email reflected that or not. Um, and I will take that off so that if you happen to um, you know, try to get on next week that it says there's no program. But thank you for getting on. And then the week after that, we will be uh, having another program. We'll be back to normal. So thank you very much for getting on today and appreciate your time. This will be posted on Wave Watch Frequency Fanatics in just a few minutes. Bye-bye.